OCO. It's how we say hello in Cherokee. I'm your host, Jennifer Lauren, at Camp Seven Star on the shores of Lake Tenkiller in the Cherokee Nation. This is the site of a special program focused on revitalizing the Cherokee language through the sacred bond between mother and child. With fewer than 2,000 Cherokee speakers alive today, preserving our language is a challenge. One group called Little Cherokee Seeds has created a unique program surrounding mothers and their babies in the Cherokee language and in our lifeways. Sio, Tesla Hodges is my name. Getty is my Cherokee name. I'm a mother in the Little Cherokee Seed Program. The speakers, they are my heroes. I trust them with my baby 100%. I know right now that my baby's being taken care of. I know that he's learning new things. My name is Melissa Lewis, and I'm the program director for Little Cherokee Seeds. When my son was born, my husband and I wanted our son, who is now five years old, to learn Cherokee. When he was born, we made sure Cherokee was the first word he heard. You know, we wanted to follow a path where we could teach him Cherokee, but we're second language learners, so we didn't have that great of a skill set to do that. So we talked to friends, we talked to speakers, and we kind of put a group together. We had a lot of discussions and decided to build this program, the Little Cherokee Seeds, where babies and moms could be together in a setting where they would hear Cherokee fluently all day, and the fluent speakers made it a point that this program would look like their own childhood. <laughs> they kind of engage in what we call like natural living activities, things that you would do, like going over to grandma's house, like going over to auntie's house. Someone's gonna be washing dishes, someone's gonna be cooking, but we're doing all of that in Cherokee. <laughs> we know that Cherokee language is very difficult to learn, and we also know that language is best learned when you're doing. We would be outdoors playing in creeks and grabbing frogs and growing gardens, and they would hear Cherokee in a natural setting, how the speakers learned it. Sanalik 
We started out just, you know, doing classes in the community for free, and we started applying for grants, specifically the Administration for Native Americans grant. And we didn't get it the first time, but we're very lucky, and we did get it the second time. So that is the majority of our programmatic budget. We have additional funders and supporters um, that have helped us do things like add fluent speakers. And we do have a partnership with Cherokee Nation and, and they kind of assist us both with programming as well as resources for the program. We go I think the original reason why I wanted to apply was learning the Cherokee language itself, to learn something that's a part of me that I have no knowledge of. We've learned to be humble, we've learned to be strong within ourselves, we've learned to respect that everyone here is a mother, we've learned to respect that everyone here is goal-oriented with creating Cherokee speakers. I call myself a second language learner um, just um, for me, you know, this is my, my second language. Um, I grew up, you know, learning English as my first language. A lot of us that learn are learning the language, you know, it's, I don't think any of us would like to call ourselves a speaker because, I mean, that's, I just don't feel like that's something we'll ever get to, uh, to their to their level. You know, your mind is already conditioned to think of everything in English and to see the world in English or through an English view. The more we learn, um, you know, there's a point where you'll start to think of things in Cherokee and you'll constantly be thinking like, how is this, how do I say this? Or, and then it, it might just start coming naturally after that. Well, it's a good thing. There's about 1,500 fluent speakers over the age of 65. And it's not math that is comfortable or fun to talk about or even think about, but we have these hard conversations in our group. That's a 10-year window that we have. And the best way we know how and that we can think to know how many of us as moms or aunts or grandmas is to teach babies the language from the time they're in utero. Because that's the way the fluent speakers said that they learned. We can't lose this many people and not create fluent speakers. I mean, I think the hardest thing for little Cherokee seeds is not very different from what has been hard for any indigenous language education program, English is pervasive. Language was forcibly taken from Cherokee people, and there's a traumatic past to that. And so we do have to have times where we sit down and we talk about that trauma and talk about historical trauma and how it's affected us today and how it bubbles up. And if the language and the culture stops with this generation, and it's not passed down intergenerationally like we're trying to do, then we're just not Cherokee anymore. I'm seeing him respond in ways that I've never expected. Obviously babies are really smart and really intelligent at learning new languages at this age. So, of course, he's gonna excel beyond my comprehension. And there are sometimes words and probably phrases he's asking me that I can't yet respond to, but just knowing that he's getting to where they want 
being a fluent speaker. I think culture-wise for the babies, now to be able to hear a baby's first word as edgy, that was the first word we heard here, and it was just breathtaking. The speakers I work with, um, I really enjoy being around them. And like, all we do, I feel like, is just we make jokes all day long and just laugh. You know, I think of them, you know, just as family, as my aunts, and they're just enjoyable to be around, and they they really care about my learning. They're sharing something so precious that was given by their family members, the language and the culture, because they love the language and culture so much. It's just the ultimate gift. Hey, Ikke <laughs> 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 <